knowing these techniques and just practicing them, it keeps your watercolor luminous. It just makes you aware that you're not, and, and you're also not just always painting the same way you can, or even painting the same way within one watercolor that you have a lot of different options. I'm doing a demo today and it's gonna be on color theory. You know how much I love color theory from the other demos. And I'm gonna apply this concept to painting. Now I am using watercolor, but these concepts can really apply to any painting medium. You know, that's something we all have trouble with. I think I had, when I first started painting, some somebody was throwing out terms about uh, warm and cool colors and I was confused. They were They were throwing out methods of you know making colors vibrate and i was confused they were throwing out all kinds of things about you know graying down chroma and everything so uh, i i'm really excited to hear what you have to say let's get right into it great all right okay so um i am gonna i'm gonna rotate my camera around to sort of show you but i just want to quickly show you this um is a, a little um grid that i have of color that i'm going to be using red and green today so I'm just gonna show you, I'm not gonna be able to fit in all the steps in real time because this does take time to make, but I do wanna show you, I'm using, um, I'm doing a still life, very simple still life here, an apple, a um, little tea, uh, tea canister and actually apple cider vinegar, so some glass. And um, I'm using, um, a, uh, this is permanent red um, medium um, and also Viridian Green. This is in actually the um, Royal Talons Van Gogh line, which is a, uh, um, just, yeah, it's just a, sim it's a simple line. I use it for uh, my demos because it's a, it's a, got a great price point. It's easy for beginners to handle because uh, the viscosity between colors is very similar. And so I like that. And what I'm doing now, I'm gonna do a slightly closer and abbreviated um, uh, concept of this, but basically in this, I'm, I'm looking at th this top row here shows um, glazing and glazing is really, I think in watercolor, one of the most magical things you can, you can do it in oil. And uh, an example of that would be Vermeer used glazing in his, uh, one of my favorite painters um, in uh, oil painting. And so it's a thin glaze, a thin layer of one color um, that's laid down first. That is typically not the local color. Local color is like, you know, if a, if a dress is blue, then then you're you're mixing blue. So instead, what Vermeer would do is he would lay down an orange, and and then and then or a, or a burnt sienna, and then he'd go in later on top with the local color, and it and it's it creates a wonderful sense of space. Like I think of it as Jello, you know, <laughs> layers of Jello. So I did I did this in uh, this sort of quick drawing in. Um, colored pencil. And I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. So I am going to be putting um, the red first. And the reason is because the red in this case is a more um, opaque color. And so I'm going to be layering the more transparent color over, over All right. that. So when you use terms like opaque, it's probably good to explain what they mean because some people might not know. And it, it means it means different. It's it's a little bit different in, in, in different media, but in in um, but in general, what it means is, especially in in a media where you are painting in a glazing method, the idea is that the color of the surface comes back um, on top of um, uh, comes back to your eye through the color. Now, when it's opaque, there's a t because of the kind of uh, pigment and how it's broken down, what's happening is the light's coming down and it's actually hitting the pigment particles and, and, it's, and it's bouncing back from the surface to your eye. However, when you're using a transparent color, which is like, um, you know, viridian, what happens is because of the nature of the pigment, instead of the light hitting the pigment particles, it's actually going through the pigment particles. And what you're seeing is the, the paper coming through. Now- so it's like stained glass. It is, yeah, that's a great analogy. It is like stained glass. And, you know, if you thin, here's a, you know, I'm adding water to this um, uh, red here, and you, which, is a, which is more of an opaque color. And you could see that it does thin down. It's not like an opaque color is, you know, if, if, if you thin it, it's going to be more transparent. Yeah, it, that would be less true with oil paint than it would be with watercolor, though. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, that's right. Um, so in, in general, all colors in watercolor are transparent compared to oil. 
Now, what I'm doing here is I have a test card. And what I use with this test card this is very important, uh, especially if you're starting out, is I, I test my I test what I'm doing on here so that I know how wet the um, my brush is and and how saturated um, of, a, of a color I have in my um, in my brush. And so I'm going to paint this first one. The first one is going to be like at the maximum saturation. And just so you know, I have my uh, my block. I'm painting on arches. 140 pound cold press and um, my favorite, uh, many, many watercolors favorite. Um, and you can see as I'm going over it, look at how you can see the, the green colored pencil through the opaque saturated um, square of red, right? So that pretty much proves you can see through it, even though it's opaque, even though I'm, I'm painting it at a, I wouldn't say this is maximum saturation, but probably like 80, 90%. So the point here, and what I've done here, I have five here, but you can see that like on the end, this is white. And I call these different gradations. This is um, dark, so D for dark, medium, light, and pale. And that's just what I've named it. It's not anything technical. Um, but the idea is that these are different gradations. And to be able to achieve a pale, I think, a, a, you know, some people paint pale all the time, but it's to achieve these gradations in, in regular jumps. Now, I might not be able to, to do this, um, but I'm gonna try. And, and one of the things that's gonna help me get those gradations is to actually um, uh, use this test card. So this is gonna be the next gradation. You can see it's a little more transparent um, than, than this one. And um, the more water is, the more water you have in your um, brush, the lighter the watercolor is going to draw. So the wetter you're painting, the more you need to anticipate that the drying is going to be more um, dramatic, the, the color once it's dry. Winnie, uh, there are people who tuned in late who didn't hear you. So you said, uh, they asked a question about what what material did you say was good for beginning artists? And you you named a brand? Yes, um, I, I love a, a Royal Talents brand, Van Gogh Watercolors is the brand that I use. I've been working, I've been using this brand for over 30 years teaching and doing my own work. And it's affordable, it's a great price point, um, and, and it's also easy to handle. You know, right. you don't have, um, that's the main thing, you're not struggling with the paint, you know, having different colors, doing different things. They all kind of have a very similar viscosity. It's the one I recommend to my students. I teach at the 92nd Street Y and I recommend this brand All to right. them. Well, hello from Brazil, from a couple of people from India, uh, from South Africa. Welcome. We have people all over the world watching Winnie and uh, it's really exciting. Yesterday, I got a, a text message or an email or a, I guess an instant message or something from somebody. And they said, you know, I tuned in because I happened to follow a particular artist that was on your show yesterday. And I, and I didn't know that you'd been on. And so I wanted to, she wanted to know where she could find all the past broadcasts, which, and they're all on YouTube, all 316 days times two, because we do a three o'clock and a 12 noon. It's different, different content. So if you guys want to find it, that's where you'll find it. I love that you have those um, videos available. I think that it's such a wonderful um, teaching tool and I'm definitely gonna be referring my students to that. Um, I, I think it's so helpful for them to see how um, demos are done live. So what I'm doing right now is because I'm glazing, I need to let these dry completely. So um, I, I, I need to let them, I didn't paint them very wet. You can see that I paint, I'm painting on a slant actually. You can see the, the setup here and I'm painting at probably like 45 degrees slant. Um, the reason, and I prefer to paint at an angle and to have it sort of propped upright a bit anyway, and that's because I can tell if there's too much water, the, it's, it's going to beat up at the bottom of these washes. Okay. All right. And so that's why. Okay, so um, while I'm waiting for that to dry, because I need to let it dry all the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this um, other um, uh, technique that is also, again, color theory. I'm using the same colors, but I'll show you how you can like shift a color, which is a lot of fun. Um, I've done, I've just, I'm doing an abbreviated version here. And so I'm going to actually start out um, with the red. And, um, and again, I want to do this like, at, I want to add the red and I'm going to do my test card here. Very important. Um, at about, I would say like 50% or 
or less. And that the, the reason is because I want to leave room for um, I want to leave room for the green to come in. I always my you know I joke around with my students a lot. Like I tell them, think about the paper as a party room. Um, and and you know you're you're like the host, so you're like you know you're bringing in these um, colors that are your guests, and you're bringing them into the room, and you're you know you're going to be. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, so I see how I'm dropping in the color just with the tip of my brush, and that's creating this change that happens in the color. And I call I think I think of this as like mingling. In other words, like you're letting the colors sort of um, mingle together on their own and, and wet, wet, wet on wet, right? So I'm gonna do another another one here. And um, you know, very similar dilution of the red um, in this one. And um, and this is like I, I have students do this exercise in the beginning, you know, they haven't been painting for a while, I'll have them sort of do this exercise. So in this one now, I'm going to be dropping in um, the green, but less and um, slightly more diluted. So again, and, um, and then again, a little bit more on this side. So this is like, you know, to really, it, it's, it, I think of it as like, you know, for anyone that's ever like done piano lessons or music lessons, you know, it's like doing your octaves, it's like doing your scales, you know. Um, now, what you, you can see here is that this is soft. In other words, the way that the colors are mingling or mixing um, is a soft way to switch the color. And when you back far away, you'll see that the colors read, you know, it's almost like a, like a Syrah or something. Right, so they'll read sort of differently. Now, um, in this one, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to, to to start with the green, and I have a diff I have a different brush here painting green, so to keep the color sort of clean. All right, and then I'm going to drop in the red. And, and it's going to be different depending on what color is the field and what color is the, you know, the color you're dropping in, you know, which one's the host. Um, this one, again, a little more diluted. All right, and then I'm going to use a, a more, also more diluted red. Great, tr great trick. Yeah, and it's just, it's also just, um, you know, this is like if you're working wet on wet, it's a great, it's a great way to, you can see this almost turning a little gray and it's very subtle. Um, so somebody asked, by the way, where do you get your egg carton watercolor cups? I have a guess, but I want to know what you say. Oh my God, everybody loves those. It's like hilarious. It cracks me up. Um, you know, they, um, I get them, I think I bought mine originally at Anthropology. It's this sort of home goods, you know, clothing store. Um, and they have these like quirky little ceramics and things. And um, I think originally I bought, I bought mine there. Um, but you can find very similar stuff online now. Um, if you just, you know, uh, I think on Amazon, if you type in deviled egg ceramic or porcelain, tray oh you're, that's a good idea know, yeah, you're gonna find it. you yeah. can do a round one too i so i went to trader joe's the other day and i bought some moji you know the ice cream oh and yeah. and uh that. after consuming the entire box i realized it's a tray just like that of white plastic and it's perfect for watercolor oh looks, looks exactly like that and it's free and you get moji with it Oh my gosh, that's great! I'm gonna. Where did you get this at Whole at Whole Foods? Where did Trader you go? Joe's. Trader Joe's. Love Trader Joe's. That's very cool. Yeah. So I I am going to. So right now, so I did that just to sort of show you another technique. I call it mingling, but I think there's a lot of different terms. Wet into wet, whatever it is, you know, charging. Um, so these are dry now, and so I actually go and I touch them, and they're nice and dry. So now I'm going to paint the green on top. This is Viridian green now on top of um uh the permanent red um medium um i'm, I'm i drew some little squares here because i'm going to be showing you another thing which is more commonly known um 
as mixing. And again, I want to I want to paint the most um, saturated version of the green, but but not at a hundred percent. You know, again, more like eighty uh, percent. So when I do this, though, I want to be I'm going to go into the green box, and you'll see the sort of amazing thing that happens is in glazing. You know, that layer underneath of the red was completely dry. So um, if you've got the right paper, something that has good sizing on it, like arches, um, you're going to be able to do the glazing. And you can see that um, the color, when I painted over the red, uh, um, it, it wasn't the green. It was you're seeing through the layer of the red. I just think that's like a very magical sensation. Very magical. But, um, yeah. And it's great because then you understand also that if you want to make red dark you're trying to get the shadow of a red barn or whatever it is darker tree you could put red first right where the shadow is and then you paint over the whole thing green and it, it, get, it makes a very sort of luminous effect so what i'm going to do now is i'm just gonna i'm gonna lighten the green a little bit so i get the next sort of um uh medium green right and this is this is for glazing so that's maybe a little on the light side so i'm gonna add a little bit more pigment and I'm, I'm mixing on the side and I'm testing on my paper to make sure. And the thing about the, the transparent colors, they really, you know, a little bit of water does a lot. So I think, I think this is pretty good. Um, so I'm going to try this might be a little on the dark side. But... I think that test strip is a great idea. Oh yeah. I wouldn't be able to paint well without one. People are telling me to get back on the treadmill because I talked about eating a box emoji. I was oh. on the treadmill this morning. Yes, thank you very much. Actually, not the treadmill, the elliptical. Uh, if you guys are enjoying her, please give a thumbs up or a heart, uh, and please share it. Uh, just go ahead and hit the share button so your friends can see it, because this is very valuable, whether you're an oil painter or a watercolorist or whatever. Hello, Tel Aviv, Israel. Somebody said they get a deviled eggs hold or a egg holder at the camping supply store that works. Oh, that's okay. great. Yeah, I think I think it's a pretty it's a you know, it's like a little pop, a pop themed kind of a um I don't think it's necessarily something he, they they you know made thinking it was gonna be great for watercolor, but you know, you could just paint on a white dish, a yeah. white porcelain dish. So why do you like why is porcelain important? Doesn't have to be porcelain, just white. I think just white. Oh, you know, um, it, it doesn't beat up. So like versus plastic. Oh, I see. It doesn't beat yeah. up. Cheap Joe's uh, had something they were offering. They had a porcelain palette they were talking about the other day. Hello, Hungry. So I'm just going to show you really quick, and then I'm going to get to painting the apple. So um, this is, again, I finished the glazing. So you can see the different color, that color like in between is um, very interesting and how if you wanna get an olive green, right? Again, if you add a little, you know, this shows you, if you paint red underneath, let it dry or add a little touch of red to the green, you're gonna make it more olive. This is a cool green. The viridian is closer to, leans a little towards the blue. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the regular thing. I'm going to be mixing. And so I'm going to actually um, mix a little bit on, on this kind of, I usually use this kind of a tray for, it's like a. It's called um, a baker's tray. It is. It is. Yeah. And it's, I, I was, I was like of it as like a, a butcher's tray. A oh, butcher's tray. That's right. Butcher's and tray. A little, a little macabre, but like the thinking, I mean, it's, it's the idea that the meat goes in the middle and the blood drains around the edges, <laughs> but, um, but you know, the blood that drains around the edges and watercolor, that's, I call that gutter color. So it goes to the gutter and it's fabulous to paint with. It's like a mix of colors. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm mixing, um, I'm mixing the two colors together. So I'm mixing, actually mixing, like physically mixing the red and then and dropping in a little bit of um, green and I'm trying to get a color that not necessarily is that but is is not more red or more green and so it's more, a little it's bit, a neutral really it's a neutral right the neutral that I would get with this combination so I'm going to start with this and so in this exercise here and again I'm doing an abbreviated version is I'm trying to first of all get a neutral um, discerning between the two colors with my eye so that it's hopefully neither more red nor more green. 
And then when I move to the left, I'm going to be, so when I paint this one, I'm gonna add a drop of red to it. And when I add a drop of red to that mixture and I paint it, it is going to be a little bit warmer. Now, how much you do and how much red you add and how quickly you progress towards, or you can see that it, it's a slightly warmer um, neutral. Now I'm gonna add another drop. And when I do that, and again, you know, I, I could do a test card. Um, when I do that, again, it goes even more red. Nice. Yeah. So You're this is like, oh, yeah, it's a subtle way to kind of like, go from you know thinking about the neutral and just thinking about these um, steps going in that direction. Now, if I go, if I add a green, it's going to go in the other direction. So um, I'm adding green to I'm going to it now. And so you can see that it goes a little bit cooler. Um, and um, again, add a little bit more green. And sometimes, you know, you end up having to add a little water because you want to, you know, we don't want it necessarily to go darker. I'm, I'm just touching my brush to like, you know, the tip, the tip of the, um, just to the, the tip of the, my, you know, big sort of squeezed out amount of um, watercolor that I squeezed out the Viridian green. And, you know, you can, any one of these, you can pull down, but you can see that, that gentle color shift, you know, and sometimes I have students do what I did here at the bottom here. I'm not going to do this, but I had them also add a little bit of drop of water so they can also see the tints because sometimes it's easier in a mix. The mixed text tends to get a little thicker and it's easier to see the color when you've added a little water to it. You can see and pull out and see what that is. In fact, if you you know, depending on the amount of room you have. I mean, I think these exercises are so helpful. If I just add more and more water, um, it's interesting to sort of see what pulls out and what that color pulls out into. Um, of course, this depends a little bit like what's in your brush, you know, but this kind of exercise where you're adding and, and then, and you know, the water's coming down, of course, because I have this at a tilt. I think that's kind of interesting. Now what you see is, Basically, the full range of what's possible between these two colors. And again, this applies to any um, painting medium. So you could you could apply this to you know to to uh, acrylic or to gouache or to oil. Um, it the you know of course the result sort of depends on the binder and whatnot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look over. I'm going to you know apply this to the still life here just as a quick study and talk a little bit about where I might apply it. Now, I always like to do this kind of thing where I brought a, I brought a knife <laughs> and I'm just gonna cut into my apple here. My son would be asking what kind of knife because he works for Cutco and he sells knives. <laughs> oh, I know Cutco. This is uh, this is a knife. I just think a knife from my mom. Um, I think it's like Henkel's. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'll set. You're making, I'll set me, you're making me salivate. <laughs> I see that, that juicy apple, right? And so what's really interesting, you see the apple and then you also see, um, you know, the slice of apple, right? Um, and so, um, so using that color co combination of paint, and I'm going to see, I might just place this here because the, I think there's more interesting shadows without the plate. So I'm going to move that aside. It might bleed a, bleed a little bit. So I've got the apple and I've got the slice of apple and I, I like to sort of angle them. So there's like one side's catching a little bit of the light coming in on this side. And there's a little bit of shadow here and there's a little bit of cast shadow. So I'm going to focus on that. I might not get everything in. Um, and hello egypt welcome mustafa okay. hello another one from india thank you india for coming welcome it's great to have these people tune in so i'm gonna do i i actually don't um i typically do not 
um, draw with a pencil when I paint because mm -hmm. I just really like to draw with a brush. So okay. I'm using what kind of brush are you using? It's a Raphael, uh, okay. extra pointed, yeah, extra pointed um, round, uh, number okay. eight. Hello, Cumbria, United Kingdom. Hello, Alaska. So here I'm drawing this sort of slice, the side of the slice, and I'm, I'm actually looking at it. And you can see that I have a broken edge, so I don't I don't do a continuous edge because that it'll look a little um, outliny. And it's boring. Uh, yeah, and 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 so and what I'm going to do is so the first thing is this part, and this is just to sort of get an idea of of where things are. I can make it a little more uh, diluted on this side, and um, so it's a little bit more uh, subtle. Okay. Um, but basically, I'm painting the slice that you see over here. I'll turn this over a little bit so you can see a little bit more of the still life. Yeah, we can see it. Hello, Spain. And um, and I don't have a yellow. No, I don't have a yellow. So like sometimes I'll judge. Like first of all, in this area here, um, I'm gonna actually start with a green. I know that seems weird because the the core the apple is 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 you know is red, but I'm gonna start with a green. Now when I put this first wash out, it doesn't have to be a flat wash. Um, but it, but I'm just going to put some green here. First of all, it's in shadow, so it has to have some cool. It can't be that bright red. So now um, you're really going to freak us all out. And this is something where I can let it dry and then glaze. Now, you, there's a lot of different ways to paint this. I mean, you can, but it's great to sort of use the still life as sort of like a a gym for thinking about different ways to paint things. Now. I'm going to actually start with, well, if I look at the green, it is closer probably to the red. It's warm on most of it. Um, so, but I'm going to start with a very, very pale wash of green. And remember, I have this test card to make sure that I know what's, uh, I, I know what's in my brush. Now I'm going to paint this sort of part of the, the little bit of part of the skin sticking out there. And you can see it's a very, this is like the pale, right? The pale green. Where, where it's greener, I can paint it greener, but I know that I'm gonna be laying some red on top of this. Okay. And it's not gonna turn yellow, not with these two colors in combination. Here, I'm gonna paint a little bit more, um, a little stronger okay. with the green, because that part is, a, this part has a little bit more shade on it. So, um, you know, and it's, it's okay with that, even when you're glazing that first layer, you, you can make it a little bit more um, and here's a little, I'm using the side of the brush to get, pick up some of the texture of the paper. Okay. Hello, Latvia. Now, we, by the way, have prizes. Uh, tell us where you're watching from. We have today, we're giving away a plein air apron, plein air magazine apron. Be sure to tell us. We also have a great video today at three o'clock, which is coming up and, um, Every day at three o'clock today, you're going to get the great Joanne Manji. She's going to give a tutorial on the fine art of dog portraits. That's at three o'clock today. You'll get to see Sam, the wonder dog. That's Allie's dog. Oh, I know Joanne. Everybody knows Joanne. Everybody. Joanne makes sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> we love Joanne. Joanne's great. She's also a Royal Town's um, art ambassador. That's yes. how I know her. Yeah, yeah, she's she's terrific. She's really fun at happy hour. Yeah. <laughs> Royal Town's a great. Kyle is great. What a wonderful group of people. They do so much for the art community. Fabulous yeah. folks. It's great. So I'm, I just want to show you, I'm painting this apple a little bit differently because, you know, again, it's not like there's a single way to paint anything. But I just want to show you, here's, here's basically a mix. So this is a mix. So I had, this is I'm painting, I'm separating the red and the green here, right? But here I'm doing a mix. Um, of the colors. And so they've, they've been, they've mixed in my brush a little bit. And, um, and so it's turning out like a little on the, you know, on the brown side from the mixing. And I'm doing this because I want to show you, you know, the difference that you're going to get between, you know, one, one technique and the other, which is, which is interesting, you know, just sort of fun to know. This is the inside of, of the, of the apple. And again, I can, um, you know, put in a little, a little touch of this or that um, just to make it sort of bleed and, and feel juicy. 
create little emergencies for myself. Um, and, and then around the outside of that apple, so this is glazing, I'm waiting for this to dry. Um, on, on this side, you can do um, mingling also. So mingling might be, for example, I'm gonna be, um, this is mixed, right, but it's wet. So if I'm doing mingling, um, I might paint with, uh, paint with the red. If I stop talking, it's just because I'm thinking about something visually, but. Um, You're so allowed I'm, to paint, red. you don't have to talk at all times. Okay. <laughs> I won't, I promise not to scold you. You know what, I, I feel I feel my, my teenage son nodding in the back when you say that, Garrett, in agreement. Yeah. Yeah, I get that from my kids. Dad, just make it quiet once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> what age is your son? He is 18. Oh, boy. Same age as mine. I have three oh of them that are 18. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, an interesting um, moment, you know, time, right? <laughs> Especially now, the poor guy, poor people, poor kids. I mean, young people I feel very sorry for in this whole pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, my kids are going to to college on Zoom. At least two of them are. Wow. Yeah, he's he's my son's all remote also. And where's home for you? Are you. Um, I'm coming in from Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, and I've I've lived here a number. I'm from New York State, so I was born in New York State. My parents came from Taiwan in the '60s. All right. And uh, I was born here. My. Um, my brothers were born here also. So we've, we've actually never been to Asia. We do a uh, fabulous event in upstate New York in the summertime in June. It's called the Publishers Invitational. And it's about, uh, this year it'll be more because it's the 10-year anniversary, but we, it's normally about 100, 120 people. And um, we paint the Adirondacks together for a week. We, we stay in a local college. We eat together. We drink together we do music together we have a lot of fun and paint portraits at night so you should come up oh i'd love to yeah that, that sounds fabulous a lot of watercolors come do you do any plein air work i do yes i love plein air i do plein air work for sure okay. yeah um what i'm doing now is i'm i'm dropping in the color so this is some um, mingling what i did here in other words so I'm dropping in, I can drop in. And what's really great is as long as you sort of keep keep it sort of wet, this area. So sometimes I might go in with a little bit of water. Um, I can I can drop in with either color. Sometimes what I'm doing is if I'm, I might be charging it. So things, something got a little bit too uh, light and I'm noticing that. So I can go in and, and kind of with the tip of my brush, just kind of poke in. I love these techniques because they really they really give a lot of texture and feel that you don't normally get from regular brush strokes. Yes, right. There's such a variety. I mean, that's what I love about this medium. It's also like it's it sometimes can be, you know, difficult to control, especially plein air. Plein air, it's like, you know, time of day is gonna affect it, the weather's gonna affect like everything. Um, but I, I like that challenge of just like seeing what happens. Um you know, here again, I'm, I'm going to pull this bead down and, um, and sometimes again, I like to sort of hit it with a strong bit of color there and see what happens. So it's, it is, it is really, um, a, a wonderful, this is a wonderful medium to bring outdoors. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's why I started painting in watercolor. Um, well, I'm practicing now after watercolor live, I'm very excited Oh, hello again, another Latvia, and hello again from Netherlands. See, when you guys hit the share button, then all of a sudden your friends see it and they join in, and then you're they're getting to learn too. So hello, Italy. Yeah, this is Linda a lot. Marie is making. Uh, Linda Marie is making cooking right now. She just put her food in the oven. Meatloaf and candied yams. That doesn't sound like a uh, like an Italian meal. It sounds like an American meal. <laughs> I love I love the fact that we have so many people from around the world tuning in. I think it's very cool. So here I'm going to do a little bit of a of a glaze, maybe slightly wet still, of the um, green, right? Just to distinguish it from this side that is a little bit warmer. 
and I'm going to put a slight bit. Now remember, I, I don't have any yellow, so I'm not painting with the local color. I'm just I'm painting with these two um, complementary colors, and and you know neither of them really appear in um, in the still life at all. In other words, as a as a color, as a straight color, yeah. you know. Um, and so we we run into this a lot, like plein air, where we don't have we don't feel like we have the color that we see. Um, I'm going to do this other one now. So I'm going to start with the green in the shadow. Um, and um, I'm going to just do a, a, a little shadow here. And I'll show you. This is going to be painted. I want to try to keep it sort of moist. Very convincing, though. Yeah, there's something There's something just very, um, it keeps the, I think these knowing these techniques and just practicing them, it keeps your watercolor luminous. It just makes you aware that you're not, and, and you're also not just always painting the same way you can, or even painting the same way within one watercolor that you have a lot of different options. Um, and I think it also is exciting to not always know how the colors are gonna, you know, come out. When yeah, it keeps it interesting. Yes, yeah. So here I'm just adding, I'm gonna be dropping in the red so sometimes I'm painting with them, you know, by themselves. And then after I drop in the red, I can still go in and, um, and drop in more green and shift it again. So, so the color is, when it's wet, it's fluid. And even when it's dry, you can glaze and you can shift that color. Um, and you're getting that reflected light in there, though. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it is, it's, and it's subtle. It's, um, it's allowing... Um, you know, watching that watercolor live, I have to say the um, Joseph uh, Zabukvic, his um, demo was phenomenal. <laughs> and um, and in you know what he said, everything he said, actually all of the all of the, you know uh, Andy Evenson and all of them were amazing. But what I what I love about his um, you know what he said about listening to the watercolor, I, I that really resonated with me you know, sort of watching it and, and allowing it to do what, what it wants. So what I'm going to do here is with this little bit, I'm going to be adding the red and um, as a glaze. Um, and I'm just going to wash out my brush here because it's a little dirty. Um, and I'm going to be adding the red as a glaze over the green. So, and you can see that it, it comes out differently. Now, when you do the glaze, it, it can't be too um, wet or it's gonna pick up that color underneath. But I, I love that the, you can see the green coming through the red. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the reverse for this shadow. So this shadow on the bottom, I'm gonna add, so this I added the green first and then added the red. Here I'm gonna add the red first and then add the green. So it's just, it, you know, my dad's a math teacher. So, um, I think all these little like experiments and, and little formulas, like, you know, I'm sort of just interested in how you can take a formula and it can sort of apply to a broad range of things in, um, you know, in pigments, in art. That fascinates me. I love it. So, you know, so like you do it one way and then you do it another way. You know, you try it this way and then you try another way. It's like a math proof. But, Thumbs you know, up and fun. applause, Winnie. This is absolutely fabulous. You are just blowing everybody away. They love this. It, it's fun. It's so much. I hope you guys try it. That's the most important thing, like just to try it because it, it is it is so much fun to. And, you know, you, he, I think if you do these um, exercises, too, you really achieve an understanding for the medium, which I think, you know, again, is 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 why we're doing it. We love there's something about this medium. It calls to us. It speaks to us. Um you know, we want to, we want to listen to it. it. It's not about forcing it to do anything. It, it is about understanding it and helping it along, you know? Um, and, and so it's just, and I, you know, I've done, I painted, I went to art school and I painted in all the other mediums and, and they're all wonderful. Every, every single one has something to offer. Um, this one spoke to me um, in a way that. Teaching is something though, that, that I think is a great lesson. I never really thought about. First off, I tell students oftentimes start out with the primaries, you know, just the three colors in white, just to learn, because I think that's the, a great way to learn and get harmony because color is so difficult. Actually, I started them out with values, but I've never thought to say, okay, just take 
two complementary colors and don't use anything but those two complementary colors. And I think it really forces you to really be creative and, and uh, try new things. That's a great approach. Yeah. It's, you I, can do I credit, so much with just those two. I, I credit my Pratt, you know, Pratt Institute education. It's a great school. We did a lot of color. This is where I learned about color, really. Yeah. Well, didn't, wasn't Albers at Pratt? Um, I don't I know thought, if he's, I thought he, Albers, Joseph Albers taught at Pratt at one time. He, he may be, I don't, not when I was there, but, uh, but, um, but, you know, I think he did teach a number of the teachers that I had. Yeah, he so, probably, um, I think he did. Well, he was gone before you got it. I think he passed yes, away. He, he may have. And then I'm thinking then eventually Yale, but I think a lot of the teachers that I had had him at Yale. And then, oh, maybe that's it. Yeah. We'll ask yeah, Charlie then, Hunter. Charlie Hunter went to Yale. He'll know. Yeah. And, and so he's, yeah, he was very influential, I think in, in the foundation program at, at, um, at uh, Pratt for, for, you know, very influential in terms of his exercises and, and, um, you know, everybody and, should have his books on color. At yeah, Joseph there's, Albers. There's, um, there's also the Albers Institute um, does these workshops. You can take these workshops from, I guess, like they, they're trained in his method. You know, the thing about the thing about it, though, that's a little different is, you know, it, what we did with Albers exercises was with dyed paper. But, you know, it's it's really applying the idea of that that exercise, though, to pigment. So, um, you know, and that's what this is sort of about, um, which is, you know, which is, again, a lot of fun, a um, lot of discovery. And now I'm just like mixing. So, again, I'm trying to sort of use in this area, I've done glazing. I've done some um, mingling in this side area. You can see what happens with that. And now I'm just going to be mixing to get like, say the stem, right? So that's just like going to be like strong mixed color. Sometimes I kind of put in like a dark mark like that. Then I take my brush and just kind of um, add a little water. So it gets a little fluid and doesn't look like it's just sort of um, flat. And that's the, I mean, that's the thing with watercolor. You have to, there has to be some flow at some point. Too much flow, you, you know, you lose control of the medium, right? Um, and not enough flow, it ends up being stiff and looks like a gouache or something else. I mean, not that, not that you can't work this way. Gouache is also a beautiful medium, but not to put down that medium because I love gouache also. I love them all. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm with you. I don't know if there's enough time in a lifetime to get good at them all, but it's fun. Yeah. And you're using uh, Van Gogh paints by Royal Talons, and you're using a Raphael brush. And yeah, Raphael extra pointed round. This one, this one's on the so the Arches paper is pricey, and and the Raphael brush is also pricey. It's um. What a what a great tool, though. But I love it. No, I, I, I feel like I, th I have to know where this brush is at all times. I have some extras just in case. <laughs> but I, you can, I have, you know, you can do this exercise with any brush. And, and I mean, it's just, I, I'm very much identifying. I think I, 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 for many years, painted with other kinds of brushes. And I really saved up for this. And, and it was something that I treated myself to um, nice. when I hit 40, you know, so. Okay, so. Again, so this is, you can see like all the different varieties of ways that you can, um, you know, use that sort of color theory. Now, like, for example, if this is too, if this is too, um, uh, I mean, I kind of like the way it is, but if, if you feel like you need to add a little bit more to that, you can glaze it um, with just a pure red. Now the, you know, just to sort of up that level, now that it's dry. Um, and so I'll go to my test card, make sure that I have some, some dilution that is going to be not too strong and not too weak and not too, especially not too wet. Um, and then I can add a little bit more heft to, um, to that side. And you can see a lot of times I'm just painting with the tip. I'm not, I'm really, you know, this is why I encourage drawing with the brush because when you draw with the brush, you really get to understand what the brush can do. It's very delicate and very beautiful. Thumbs up and applause. You are doing yeah. great. Great. 
And I'm just going to finish off with a little, there's a little darkness here. So I'm going to, and sometimes I just like to put in a little, like, you know, tip, little bit of the tip and let things sort of bleed a little bit. So it's not, it, I'm not illustrating the apple. I'm just sort of suggesting. Right. It, you know, well, somebody asked to repeat the book. It's Joseph Albers. Uh, he has books on color. I'm not sure the names of the books off the top of my head. And then she's using um, Van Gogh paints, Arches watercolor paper, and a Raphael brush. And Van Gogh is from Royal Talents. Elaine is asking, does she have a streamlined video? Not yet. <laughs> Somebody's looking out for me. <laughs> So again, I'm, think, I'm thinking we need to talk. <laughs> I'm I'm happy to do more, and um, I'm happy to share this if it's helpful for people. It keeps you painting and keeps you interested. I think it's I think it's great. Um, I never get to, I never get tired of it. It's it's always there's always more to learn. With color theory, there's always more. There are always more colors to experiment with, see what they do. Um, so it's it's very uh, very exciting for me. To... You know, no one would ever look at those those um, paintings and not say, "Oh, there's no yellow in that apple." I mean, that that it's very convincing. It's very beautiful. I it it just proves the point that you don't have to put everything literal. Right. Yeah. And it's and and it's just very just the two the variety of different ways that the colors can you know work together. I think is very exciting. You know, having you know playing around with the shadow, doing this and doing that. But also just like, you know, um, under, understanding the medium, um, you know, listening to it. And, you know, I feel like these exercises, like, again, doing scales on the piano or you doing your um, octaves, it's like Bach, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's timeless. They're timeless exercises. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Again, there could be, like, if I were putting in that fabric in the back, I did a, did a dark mixture of the two and I go a little bit more on the green side of them at that mixture, you know, it, I, I could put in something in the bath that is a, a little bit cooler and, and even very dramatic. This isn't what's back there, but like if I were making something, wanted to highlight that edge of the apple. That negative shape, I think, is so key. Yeah. Well, it looks like the edge of a table. You know, it's really wonderful. Right. Just kind of highlights. So, and and again, this is this is like starting. You know, this dry brush. So this is you know, wonderful, um, direct, very direct kind of painting. I love and this. Then, yeah, and then shifting shifting the color, adding that sort of edge here. And, and so this, this being right up against that apple is also going to, you know, create some interesting um, sensation. I can add another sort of color in there. And Do you use uh, tube paint or pans of paint? I, I prefer tubes, but when I'm doing, um, if I'm doing plein air, though, I, a lot of times I will go out with uh, pans in a, in a little kit or something. I got the greatest little kit that Elaine Miller gave me. It's called a whiskey kit. It's very small. It's about four inches square, and it's got little silver bottles and pot pallets and, and collapsible cups. She got it at Cheap Joe Miller's, and it's the coolest thing. As a matter of fact, I should show it. I'll show it before we go. Very, very I loved I listened to um, Cheap Joe's story, and I loved it. Yeah, he's a sweet man. He called oh. me during the event, and uh, we got got to know each other a little bit. It was fun. Yes, it was great. I love that. Was just that was really wonderful. I, I enjoyed Watercolor Live so much. I can't tell you, Eric. I I've never, you know, been, and it was my first time, and I couldn't believe how um, engaging it was. The chat box on the side was insane. It was. It was the largest watercolor, well, the largest art conference in history. It was pretty cool. 40 countries. 
Wow. Um, hello, Sweden. Welcome. It's really fabulous. So it's it's fun. I mean, you know, again, you know, it's just um, here. It's dry, and I'm just kind of putting in a little bit of color there so that it resonates. But you know, just having these bleed out. But again, it's just it's it's fun because it's just two colors. So there's something very sort of simple about it. Um, yeah. Okay, Winnie, I'd like for you to uh, come back on camera. Okay, great. All right. And yep. uh, yes, good. Great. Hi, everybody. Hi, this is Winnie. You haven't seen her face if you tuned in late. Uh, Winnie Huang. And uh, Winnie, uh, you're in your studio. Maybe you could just, I don't know what camera situation is, but we would love to see some of your artwork and maybe see your studio if you got just a minute. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, and... Um I know it's a mess. <laughs> it is a mess. So I will I will show you around a little bit. Um, so this is this is my desk. Um, let me. Um, I mean, maybe I'll just do this. I'll just rotate. Yeah. Okay. A little bit. By so, the way, I loved when you did the color charts on Watercolor Live. That was oh, yeah. that really a <laughs> color wheels and color charts. Yeah, the Albers. This is so. Um, this just looks out. I'm in. I'm in Brooklyn. My, I'm like I call it off off Park Slope. So I'm like ten stops into Brooklyn from Manhattan, yeah. <laughs> and. Um, and then I have, I do a lot of pastels. So I also teach pastel at the Pastel Society. And so I have, I have examples up so I can sort of inspire students and, and, you know, pull some of them down sometimes to, to show. I teach, um, I teach three, believe it or not, like a three dimensional design model making class at Parsons. That's what I teach. Oh, we, wow. um, and uh, as a fashion, there's a fashion studio that I'm teaching right now. And they had to make jewelry out of paper. Um, a replica of actual jewelry and then develop their own. So it's a lot of different kinds of things. And, um, and yeah, I have these other, and I'm working on this series of jars. This is, in, uh, if you've seen the work of Janet Fish, she does all these jars. So I started doing these um, jars sort of in homage of hers, but in pastel. And um, those are kind of fun. Nice. And glass. Yeah. So do you make your living as a teacher? Yeah. It's, I teach, uh, believe it or not, anywhere between 11 to 15 classes a semester at four, right. four to five different places. At it's, four to five different yeah. places? You can really only do it in New York, I think. Yeah. Well, you, have a, you have a terrific work ethic to be able to pull that off. It's a little, it's, it's sort of like um, being an airline and overbooking and, and then seeing what, like, what runs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fabulous. Well, Wendy, you have been terrific today. I'd encourage everybody to go to Wendy's Website, it's W-E-N-N-I-E-H-U-A-N-G, which is pronounced Wong. That's right. Uh, WinnieWong.com. And visit there, and you can find out all about her classes and everything else she has to offer. I'd also like to thank Royal Talons uh, for allowing Winnie to come on. Uh, Royal Talons makes the Van Gogh watercolors that she used. And so thank you to Kyle and everybody over at, at Royal Talons. Winnie, thank you so much. Thank you.